You're listening to Generation Space. In our very first episode, we're having a conversation with two space operators about who they are and what they do. The basics of protecting the space domain. In other words, SpaceX. What's going on, everybody? My name is Master Sergeant Dave Salinitri, and I'm the host of this podcast, uh, Generation Space. Joining me is First Lieutenant Sakovich. And uh, LT, what unit are you from here? I'm from One Stops out at Shriver Air Force Base. Cool. Well, thanks for being here. And sitting next to your left here is uh, the very infamous uh, Colonel Manner. Appreciate that. Yeah, the uh, director of uh, General Raymond's uh, Commander's Action Group. So Appreciate being here. Yeah, well, Thank appreciate you here. Much. Thanks for gracing us with your presence. So, so it's kind of like, you know, in the new year, you've got the the new year coming in and the old one leaving so you got baby new year coming in and you got old man time yeah. leaving yeah, so yeah it's a special special uh, combo to be out here i was told not to use the word bookend and i don't know if i just violated <laughs> that by That's saying terrible. bookends of careers bookend, exactly yeah yeah now colonel up. manor is going to be around for a long time no thank you thank you, thank you. <laughs> There we go. Glass half full. You know, that's good. That's good. So talk a little, um, I'd like to hear you talk a little bit of just about, um, you know, uh, space. How long have you been in here and like what you've seen? And then uh, I'm really curious to hear what you grew up with and what you're kind of like seeing now. Um, I mean, it's been a remarkable two decades, really, of being in uh, in the space business and watching us evolve from just merely integrating space effects to the, the joint fight to seeing it emerge as a warfighting domain. So when I came in, it was all about operating systems. How do we engineer? How do we keep systems going? And then how do we then take what the effects that were being brought off those satellites to integrate them into more into the tactical fight? But now, as we've seen in the rise of the near-peer competitors, we see the need to look at space as a warfighting domain in order to protect and defend those systems on orbit. So what we've seen the whole gamut of you know, Gulf War, Desert Storm, OEF, and all those other things into what we now see as being challenged in the space domain by a few near-peer competitors. What, what are you seeing? Like, uh, I mean, I think I came in right at this transitional time where we're, we're going from being that support function to being warfighters in space. So we're, we're taking on those, those ideas of thinking tactically in space rather than just providing, you know, just comm or PNT or, or just the effects that uh, the warfighters on the ground use. And we're actually fighting that uh, strategic level war in space every day. And it's been a mindset shift because I came in kind of bridging the gap between the new way of thinking and the old way of thinking. And uh, yeah, we're, we're making that transition right now and it's a bit of growing pains and that's a very interesting place to be as a, as a young lieutenant. So being, um, so war finding in space, so you like a space gunner, like do, 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 space gunner, door gunner, whatever it is. is that, I've seen the patches. I've yeah, seen people comment it's, on our it's Facebook like page. Yeah. We see you. But uh, yeah, is that what it's like? Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, we're going up there and we, we, you know, we get trained in uh, in guns and everything and it's great. Um, yeah. <laughs> we're not supposed to say that. That's good. Weapons, there we go. No. <laughs> but like, what, like, uh, I feel like it's like it's not an oxymoron, but like what mm -hmm. is like like what we're finding in space? Like, uh, I, so been in the Air Force more than ten years, you know, 12, going on thirteen. And when I heard the the, the phrase, you know, space warfighter, when I first got here, um, I didn't laugh. I almost did. So, like, well, <laughs> so like, what is it? Like, my mom doesn't know what it is. My aunt, my peers don't know what it is. You know, I know what it is now, but like, is it? You want to tackle it? So I, I, you know, I would say. When you look at other domains, what does that mean? There's offensive capabilities, there's defensive capabilities, there's maneuver. There are, you know, when, when air first started out, we had observation balloons and we were watching. Same with satellites. You know, we have intelligence gathering satellites and other things. And from that, things emerged to both offensive and defensive, the, the ability to, one, ensure that we could take the fight to an adversary in the air domain, and then defend against other air and other countries coming at us with their air uh, capabilities. So a, a lot is left to be developed as far as war fighting in space. We're still working through and seeing some of those. But what we're trying to do is just apply those timeless principles of offense, defense, you know, and all those other things and just apply it to the space domain where we see other things like air, like I described. Mm -hmm. Well, and like that has a lot to do too with like, uh, even like things like getting money out of an ATM machine. Like exactly. I know, I know I like you know, my Jersey Italian came out a little bit when I went to the ATM machine, it was like no money. Like, exactly. What do I do? I don't carry cash. Like what year is this? Uh, exactly. But all of a sudden like, 
Yeah, so, but I mean, that has to do with, I mean, that's a space function, right? 18, or? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. so you, I'm sorry, go it's, ahead. I mean, sir, it's a, it's a combination of protecting those things that we do have, and then also working to prepare offensively. So we have those capabilities already. We want to keep them. Uh, you don't want to end up in a situation where those, those assets that we have go away just because we don't know how to protect it. Right, right. And I think it might surprise most Americans that GPS is flown by the Air Force. So the timing signal from GPS is what makes those ATMs, the timestamp work, the pay at the pump, uh, the cell towers, the timing signal all through there. And those are really dependent on that timing signal from a GPS satellite flown by the Air Force. So not only important to the American way of war, but important to the American way of life. Precision farming, other things use GPS all through, all through our country. So I think that's that tie that you were talking about. And when we're talking about protecting our space assets, we're not just talking about it from a military sense. We're talking about protecting capabilities that are used by everyday Americans, mm -hmm. you know, from our GPS receivers on our phones, other things, just finding our way in New York City. How hard is that without yeah, your yeah, yeah, without yeah, your yeah, cell phone yeah. and other things with your Terrifying navigation app, is. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that I mean, that's so that stuff all uh, even the, the civilian use, you know, the day to day use. That's just that's not like commercial. I mean, that's a that's military ran. It is, absolutely. And so when we're talking about protecting and defending these assets and we're looking at the potential as space becomes a warfighting domain, it's not just a matter of preserving these military capabilities, it's preserving these capabilities, you know, not only for the U.S., but as you look globally, who uses GPS? It's absolutely. billions of people around the world. So when we're talking about moving in and protecting, we're protecting that. I tell you, one, well. of, one of the most terrifying, uh, terrifying events I had in my career was I had to take a, a team of a couple of journalists to Rome and try to navigate my way around there with my American cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> Before I went there, like I, I had printed out these things called MapQuest directions. Oh, yeah, absolutely. A map. Like someone on oh, our gosh, social media yeah. asked us, like, hey, have you ever heard of a map? And I'm like, we'll talk to our historian about it. Like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> but like, I felt so out of my element. Absolutely. And uh, luckily, my unit ended up giving me the phone that ended up working later on. Uh, but uh, I mean, that's just the things we take for granted. You yeah, know? absolutely. Definitely. I mean, I miss uh, the days in my dad's truck where we just looked at the Atlas in the back seat. And it was pretty good. Yeah, yeah that yeah. always worked. You know, it's fine. Right. right. We just, <laughs> we're, Let we're, alone having a phone talk to you and tell you where to go. Right. <laughs> I know. Or Schwarzenegger on like Waze app. You know, exactly. his voice. Yeah. 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 That was more my mom telling my dad where to go. And that yep. didn't work uh, out. Nope. Always not always so the best. Anyway, <laughs> GPS yeah, saving marriages since, like, <laughs> since, since <laughs> early 90s. Absolutely. No, was this something? So, uh, LT, you were at the academy before getting I here? I was, yes. Yeah. So, was this like uh, something, a career field you wanted to get into? Uh, yes. So, actually, I grew up wanting to be an astronaut. I actually went mm. to space camp seven times. Uh, Nerd alert. I, no, <laughs> yes, no. that is true. That is true. Uh, but I, I fell in love with. With, with NASA and space exploration and uh, basically pursuing a career in space no matter what it was going to be, uh, whether that was in the military or not, that's what I was going to do. And then when I got to the academy, I had a great mentor, uh, Colonel Jack Anthony. He took me under his wing and he pretty much just said like, hey, here's the Falcon Sat program. You're going to get to build your own satellite here and uh, worked on that all four years, got to operate and build uh, a couple different satellites out there and really got into it and said, yep, this is, this is for me. So that's that's how I ended up at Shriver because, you know, it's, it's the place to be for space. My college experience was a little different, and that's why I'm – never mind. Uh, but uh, <laughs> so, um, so, like, like we're seeing a little bit of a generational, mm -hmm. like, change uh, with how space was looked at even just, like, two, three years ago. Absolutely. And now, like, I, like examples of this, you know, I was uh, downtown Colorado Springs this Wednesday, and uh, I was at this bar that my buddy describes as, like, a Japanese punk disco bar Fantastic. and uh yeah sounds about right like all the dudes there had like uh beards on skinny jeans but yeah. didn't know how to change a tire kind of kind of type <laughs> good, uh, good. but on the tv was a loop of I, the iss so like That's there's incredible. music playing and it's just the ISS and like every once in a while there'd be some like constellations and stuff, but it's like, that's what everybody, like everyone, Absolutely. you talk about, mm -hmm. talk, go up to a kid on the street, talked about like SpaceX, Elon Musk, ULA, they know all about it. It's, it's just an extremely exciting time. I mean, we've heard the president, you know, getting behind space and a lot of the announcements uh, organizationally with the six brands, the Space Force. And so there's a lot all the way through our, our government leadership. There's a lot of support for space. It's a lot of talk. And at the same time, as you described, you've got guys like Elon Musk and others that are really creating this excitement 
Sir Richard Branson and other. I mean, just this excitement that space is cool. And it's fun to, you know, it's, it's, it, it harkens back to the 60s when we were racing and trying to get to the moon. It's just this all in, everyone's excited, this new, you know, it, it was a new frontier that we were trying to, trying to reach. And I think you see the same type of excitement, really this, this younger generation, you mentioned Generation Space. Uh, when we when we we spoke, it's our new podcast. Here is here is Generation Space. <laughs> it's the new generation that's coming in, that's excited, that's part of this new group. That space is cool again. We can do you know we can do anything. I mean, it's just the optimism that anything's possible, not only from a commercial sense but from a military sense and others. And it's this excitement that really captured what generation captures what Generation Space is all about. Yeah. Well, like, like even just the two and a half years I've been here, like when I got here, I remember when my uh, one of my mentors called me up, he told me we have an opening at Space Command. And I uh, I kind of chuckled a little bit like, yeah, and like, I'm not going there. <laughs> like, you know, like, stay away. Yeah, exactly. uh, but, you know, he, he told me things were, were changing and it's different. We want to tell the space story because uh, back, you know, I'm sure when you came in as a lieutenant, you really didn't. You don't really talk about space, mm -hmm. but now that's exactly. you know, it's capturing the narrative. And just the two and a half years I've been here, even like space symposium, exactly. the, the first year was a little, you know a little quiet. Second, last year, Vice President Pence comes out. Every single Air Force leader we had come out exactly. from from the Pentagon, and you know, I can only imagine what it's going to be like this year. But uh, I mean. Yeah. And I think within the military community, you have joint warfighters that are very space. They're they're space smart now. It, back when I was first here, you know, in the in the coming into space business, well, a little bit, <laughs> a little bit after four, that, a little bit after that, Sal, I'm not that old, like close. I just looked that old, just right? Kidding, you know, but uh, you know, it was there wasn't an understanding of what space brought. It was space was something when pick, people picked up the their satcom file, they just the dial tone was there. They didn't really understand what was behind that. And over the course of a couple generations, a couple decades, I think people have gotten much smarter in the military community about how important space is and what space brings to the fight. Flip that around, I think you have space people and professionals that are much smarter about the joint fight and about what their effects are doing and in, in being integrated into more of the tactical fight as well. So it works both ways. So th I think that's that understanding of why space is also moving in a military sense, moving to the forefront as well. It's this understanding, it's shared understanding. Yeah. We have ways to go, but I think it's, we're much better now. And it's additionally just getting that education out there. So when I was a cadet, uh, when I first started, I was probably one of two freshmen that started with the Falcon Sat program and doing those satellite operations. I just heard now they have 50 cadets signing up per semester for it. So it's just getting that word exactly. out there, what we do, how cool it is. Um, I mean, yeah, planes are awesome, and I have a ton of friends that are pilots, but also I think what we're doing is is absolutely on the forefront of military operations and what we're going to be doing in the future, so it's awesome. So one of the stories I heard recently, and, uh, uh, that there was a cadet at the academy, and he got originally picked up to be a pilot, and uh, you'd think that that'd be like the pinnacle, right? Um, and he was like flat out depressed. He's like, no, I, want, I don't want to fly planes. I want to fly higher. He's like, I want to fly satellites. <laughs> um, and like, he, you know, and he's still, you know, that's something he's still hoping to be able to do. Mm -hmm. um, I just feel like that's such a, just a culture ch change there where, um, yes. you know, I remember General Raymond at one point saying like, you know, we used to be like the last kicked, uh, picked for kickball. Sorry. Yes. I don't think we are anymore. I yeah, I would say. I don't know. I was, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I would say my yeah. freshman year, it was definitely like, Ugh, I got space. Like, I don't know what this is about. I don't know if I want to do this. This isn't great. And then, uh, totally changed mindsets by the end of it. I had people who, tons of people, who was their first choice when I was a senior, and it's growing and growing even more. So it's it's the place to be. And and I will tell you how far I think we've gone. You know, when I first started out, you know, I was in the GPS program, so I was in the Second Space Operations Squadron. And I flew satellites, right? So my wife, my boss asked, or my wife's boss asked her, well, what does, what does Mike do for a living? Well, he flies satellites. And she seriously looked at my wife and goes, well, I, I hope he's okay and safe. That's pretty dangerous, isn't it? Thinking I was literally in the satellite <laughs> flying it. So I think we have an understanding now. We've gone far beyond that. And I think people really understand what it's about and how it is exciting. And again, like we were talking about this new generation, this excitement about the domain really is pulling people to it. Again, there's optimism about anything's really possible at this point. Yeah. I mean, it seems like just the, the if you had to be part of this command or this mission at any point in time, like 
this is this is the time. This is it the is, time. It Absolutely. is for sure. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, what do you, where do you see uh, this? Uh, I guess this generation space going. Like, is it? Uh, you know, we, t- we I mean, we were talking the other day, Sarah, about you know, you know, w- w- you know, just uh, you know. Every time the Air Force said or the nation said, hey, we need this, exactly. we'll say, like, you know, hold my bear, watch this, I'll do it, and I'll exactly. do it even better than how, how, how you requested. I, I think this guy, literally, the sky is not the limit, right? I mean, it's beyond that. This, this generation coming up is there's no bounds. When we came in, we had preconceived notion of what was space, satellite operations, and other things. That, that's, it's wide open right now. And I think there's a lot of optimism that they're, they're just – they're free thinkers, they're innovators, they're excited. And I mean, really, I'm excited to see what they're going to bring and what they're going to continue to do. So when you say, what is this new generation? And what it's, it's boundless at this point, mm-hmm. because this generation that you represent um, really is, is unafraid to innovate, unafraid to think outside of the norms of what we've had. And really, it's wide open at this point. Mm-hmm. And it's all about taking those opportunities, too. So we have all kinds of exercises, all kinds of in-house things that we do, courses, and, and just different advanced trainings that we get to go through in order to have those opportunities to think differently. So we have you know our time on console where we're operating satellites, but then we have four months off here where we're allowed to use that boundless thinking and come up with new ways of doing things and and talking about the old ways and then just continually improving them every single time so it's it's very fast paced and we're growing exponentially every single day every day is new so we're just you know we're, we're growing and we're learning every day um so i know like, i know one of those opportunities that i heard about is like i guess like two two, three years ago, uh, I think maybe two years ago, they started Space Flag. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, like my understanding is like up to that point, like space operators really didn't have a way to like really train the way they mm-hmm. needed to be trained. Um, you know, when you're a lieutenant, you didn't, you probably didn't have that, but I think you went you went through that. Yes, yes, I got to go in December. It was a very cool opportunity. Uh, it was it was a long exercise, you know, about two three weeks of just constantly just mission planning, doing the exercise, going through execution, and then start over again. But it it helped exponentially with the way that I think and the way that my peers think. So everybody who went kind of went in with a mentality of like, I heard the days are kind of long, like this doesn't seem like it's going to be the most fun thing to do as, you know, like young lieutenants, we want to, you know, go out and hang out with our friends at night and everything, not be here till seven or eight. But then we all came out of it with a totally new perspective. We had, you know, new ideas on how to mission plan, bring those back to the squadron and show people how to do it. Uh, New ideas of tactics, like how do we move our satellites around? How do we defend them? How do we create those offensive postures and, and, develop what we're doing in space and it's only going to get better and we're trying to do that three times a year i think now so i mean think about that like a year from now we'll probably have 10 times the amount of tactics we do right now exactly and i think it's a recognition that you know space as a war fighting domain there are threats out there contested Mm -hmm. and so it's contested and so space flag given an opportunity to no kidding go up against an adversary or a scenario and plan against that and execute against that. Again, when I was an operator, young operator in the command, it, it space was benign. And so it was just, you know, rinse and repeat. It was flying the system. Now they're, they're practicing against adversaries and potential adversaries and what that means. So it's very exciting, very exciting time to be going through those types And it's of constantly a challenge because, like I said at the beginning, we're in between the two generations. We're coming up on the new generation and then we have the old generation. So we're kind of trying to make that bridge of, of challenging the way that things are done. And Absolutely. every day you have to walk in with that mindset because, yeah, I'll be fair, like sometimes, sometimes I walk in and I'm like, well, this is how it's done and I just want to sit and just do this normally and I just want to get through my day. But you, you can't do that now. Right. It's, we're Absolutely. growing and growing and we have to keep coming up with those new ideas and uh, you, have to, you have to fight for it every day. Are you seeing like, um, are you, like you know, we have that, that, that – I don't know, the paradigm of sorts where the senior leaders, they'll say, we want your ideas. And then you pitch ideas. And then there's that middle supervisor and they're like, no, nah, bro. Um, are you actually seeing, are you, are you, are you, are you, are you actually seeing, yeah. no. 
I mean, like you, we've yeah. all seen it. Like mm-hmm. I'm sure you've seen a second lieutenant. I, I see it all the yeah. time. You know, exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, but have you? Uh, are you seeing like some some ideas actually like take place or the kind oh, of? Oh, like, absolutely, standard? absolutely. I think the key to that is just pressing the issue. So if you have a good idea and you think you have a good idea, just keep pressing it. And if they keep turning you away, just get more evidence, get more information, do more research, have have your case ready to go, and just keep keep doing it. I have a friend who did one of the the I War panels, and he got rejected the first go round came back the second go round and now it's at an extremely high level the idea that he had so he just kept trying and kept getting the information and that's what you got to do if you're in that situation and i think nothing is more motivating and inspiring for innovation than when people bring good ideas forward they are moved out on rather quickly and executed. Everyone sees it, it's motivational. It leads to second and third order effects of innovation. So in other words, in the past, I think we had the no storm and you bring something forward and there were 15 reasons why we're gonna tell you we can't do that. Mm -hmm. Well, it's been flipped on edge. Now it's like, what are the, how are we gonna make this work? That's a great idea, let's move out on it, let's figure out how to make it work. And there'll be 15 reasons how we can make it work, and we're trying to move and make that happen rather quickly. One innovation leads to two innovations, leads to three, to four, to five. And that's what we're seeing, these great second and third order effects of implementing these great ideas that people are bringing forward and inspires others to bring great ideas forward as well. Mm -hmm. I think think part of that, you know, sometimes that starts at the top because, uh, you know, like let let the actions and words kind of uh, meet meet up. And we have like Chief Wright who's pitching ideas to make like life easier all the time. And you have like General Golfing. He's like, we're going to actually go back to the squadron. We're going to revitalize it. And it seems like, okay, well, if, if they're if they're you know pitching ideas and it's working mm-hmm. out, exactly. um, you know, and then that goes that like Magic Com and Squadron wing, wing wing Squadron commanders seems like it's actually like oh this is mm-hmm. this is real exactly. like this is happening. And it's also having those opportunities to fail too, right? Because not all ideas are great. So I mean, being able to get out there and go to something like Space Flag, and I mean, I'll be honest, the first go round of the the three rounds that we did, I fell on my face a little bit. Like I didn't quite know what I was doing, and the you have to have that opportunity to fail in order to get back up and learn that's why we do debriefs that's why we do all these these different I guess like ways of moving forward in order to learn from what we do because if you don't have that chance to fail either then what's the point I I saw this uh this quote on uh Instagram, right? Which is like everyone knows is like poetic. You know, that's where mm-hmm. you post like pictures of food and some like life changing quote. Uh, yeah, right. That's true. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Um, but like, there, it's something like I win or I fail. Like either, you know, either or just, I, uh, yeah. Is, is that what it is? I, I win, win or I learn. There we go. There's I win no or I failure. learn. Yeah. There's only yeah. lessons learned. There we go. There's yeah. no failures. Jersey education. You no, know, you're so. good. You're good. But that's exactly the case. And now's the time. I mean, when you're, you can't look at crisis as you know understanding what's going on we're going to jump in and this is where we're going to learn everything and just come out you know and be perfect in crisis you have to do that ahead of time you have to learn you have to fail you have to rinse repeat and get better and stronger because when it comes game day you've got to have that i mean sure there's going to be lessons in conflict and all that it's not going to go perfect but you have to do that ahead of time yes no team that i know just plays regular season games without practice without scrimmages, without other things. You ramp up, you learn, you adjust, and when it comes game day, you execute. It's yep. natural, it's yep. instinctive. Absolutely, and being okay with that too. Like you have yeah. to be able to come to the table and say, yeah, I messed up. That's like tough. we we have evaluations all the time, and if you did it wrong, then you get a chance to debrief it and be okay. And I mean, that's, that's something that I became accustomed to in the space community because I was always just focused on, I gotta do this perfectly. I have to come in and do this perfectly. And if I don't do it perfectly, then I'm going to fail the entire space community and America will fail. <laughs> that, but, that, that, <laughs> my parents are gonna yeah. be sad, yeah. you know, aunts and uncles, everyone's gonna be mad. My, my first grade teacher is gonna cry, <laughs> you know. Man, I got, got teeth quick, I got real heavy. But you, you have to take those chances and, and, and recognize that you're gonna have the opportunity to debrief it you're gonna have the opportunity to learn from it Um, I'll I'll be honest and say the debrief process can be a pain in the butt when you first come into the Air Force you say really I have to put it in this format but man does it make a difference it actually helps you a lot and uh, when it's structured like that it's easy to convey to everybody else so speaking of conveying to everybody else Mm -hmm. um, so how do you convey to like 
you know, uh, your kid sister, or your mom, or whoever, like, you know, what it is that you do here? Because that's the question I had to ask a lot of space operators yeah. when I first got here. Like, what is, what is it what exactly? You, you do. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. exactly. Uh, I guess for me, uh, I mean, most of my friends going to the academy are all, you know, pilots. So my brother's C-17 pilot, boyfriend's CV-22s, just like... I can relate to them by telling them what I can provide them, right? I'm like, you know your GPS and your SATCOM? Exactly. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> so right. so that, that's a little easier, but say like my parents, they're both in the medical, in the medical field. And so uh, conveying to them, I'm just like, so you know how there's NASA, right? <laughs> there's, an, there's an international space station and we send people up there. It's like that, but there's no people up there and it sends signals back down to the earth to do really cool stuff for us. So look at your phone, and then I pull out the phone, and I show them the maps, and I'm like, this is what we do. And they they appreciate it. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like the, uh, the, spa the, uh, the Air Force Space Command version of like, so like uh, anyone who has this Air Force, like, oh, so you're a pilot. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm a pilot. Like, if you're silly enough to believe that I am a pilot, I'm just a gonna, space I'm just gonna, pilot. Yeah, I'm just gonna let's just run with that. Uh, but like, <laughs> someone's like, "Oh, you're in space." So, uh, like, how many rockets have you been up on? Like, what's space like from up there? And, like, they assume you're an astronaut. I mean, I feel like it's like, yeah. And, and it, I would find not only you know early on in the career, not only just you know people at home or whatever, or friends out of the military, but I found. You know, my friends that were pilots and other things wanted to understand about space, and they asked me a lot of questions about how do we operate satellites, how do we talk to satellites, what is that like? And I think simple analogies, I think one showing GPS, but also just looking at a satellite like a car. It's got steering, it's got a power supply, it's got, you know, thrusters, it's got, you know, engines, it's got all that. And put it in terms of simple analogies that people understand or are familiar with, they, they start to understand it a little more. Now, it's a very expensive car. And it operates a long lot like a longer BMW? than other cars, but yes. you know. And you don't actually get to touch it is the other problem. <laughs> That's the other so exactly that, right. That is something that is is very foreign to a lot of people. So you have like your pilots and then normal people, you tell them about yeah, you know, the car and exactly. everything. And for us it's we heavily rely on, you know, using the computers and the consoles to talk to the satellites and make sure that they're doing okay up there. And that is a very foreign concept to a lot of people. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, I had this, uh, there was a couple uh, space operators in here not long ago when I was taking some photos of them, and they're on the whiteboard, and they're just talking sure. about, you know, potential, like, tactics and all, and the, there was the senior operator, I think it was called, like, attack mentor, mm -hmm. um, and he was saying, okay, well, if the sun's over here, and this is what That's your right. fuel is, I'm like, what like you actually think about that because all of a sudden exactly. he's starting using words mm -hmm. that like I a lame man <laughs> sure. start to understand um, and then so I'm like okay uh, I put the camera down I'm like what, what's actually going on here so mm -hmm. what's interesting about that I mean when you think about that I talked about the air domain for example pilots and other things you know using the sun using altitude speed for maneuver and other things is not it's not foreign we've done that in other domains and and so the fact that we are now thinking in those terms of maneuver and other things with regards to sun and fuel consumption and other things is is maybe a little newer in the space domain, but it's not new in other domains. So we're just taking lessons again that we've learned in these other domains and applying them to space. And that's what's exciting because now when you sit down with somebody in another career field, say you sit down with a pilot or somebody else, you can speak in common language. Maneuver. I mean, it's nothing. You understand each other a lot better in talking in those terms. That's awesome. Yeah. So, uh, you know, um, what, where do you think we're going right now as far as like this career field? You know, the, the enemy is constantly changing. Like, what is what, what's what's the the lieutenant look like? Who's like right now, like uh, learning how to read? You know, like uh, who's uh, learning how to drive a car? <laughs> you know, what, what's the six? Absolutely. You know, you know, what, what what do you see going on? I mean. Again, this, you, don't, you have a crystal ball, right? Well, I, I don't. I mean, <laughs> okay. it's, it's incredible. Right, I mean, we'll if, if we'd no. have sat here and, you know, even to talk about space being a warfighting domain was something from when I started my career to now is, is truly a, a, a turning point, if you will. So, I mean, when you look at when you look at the younger generation coming through the technological growth, we talk about Moore's law and how technology is so rapidly, uh, you know, is rapidly changing over time. It's tough to put a to pinpoint artificial intelligence. Surely is going to become a bigger player. Sharing data, other things. So, 
what a satellite operator may do in the future is totally different. Maybe they're controlling a whole constellation of satellites. Maybe it's 30 instead of just one at one time. Maybe they're looking at, you know, how uh, the, I would say that the, the speed of things will be quicker. Their decision space will be shorter. I think they'll be they'll have much more data. They'll be more adept at technology and using artificial intelligence and other things. I think and and so that is something that's just going to be normal to these these future operators as they grow up. I mean, the internet was new. You remember when there was no internet? Yeah, yeah. I, remember, I mean, we didn't I remember have the yelled, internet. I remember yelling like well, you may not. Yeah. I mean, our, our, cord, yeah. our phones had cords on them. You know, we didn't have a remote. You had to go up and change the TV. The level of change from technology and what we've grown accustomed to has grown so far over our careers, it's tough to put pinpoint exactly what that's going to look like for that new generation. Absolutely. Yeah. And even just like social interaction. Like, exactly. I mean, just yeah. like we've gone from face to face to phone calls to now we can talk to each other on video chat whenever we want exactly. kind of thing. It's, it's insane. Like you go to the space symposium one year and then you go to the space symposium the next year and the changes are infinite it's insane like it's just growing 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 so i don't even yeah i have no idea what i'll be doing in 10 15 years but i'm pretty sure it's going to be really cool yeah nice. i always joke with my kids <laughs> when we travel across country you know we had books we read yeah. and they take their all their friends with them in the i'm like you have all your <laughs> friends in the yeah. back seat yeah. with you you don't know what it's like you don't know what it's like we had those handheld video games that had little lines but now they got yeah. they got the world at their fingertips wherever they go and that kind of information. So having a group that's been used to that growing up their whole time, who knows what they're gonna come up with? Who knows what kind of innovations they'll have? And as America has developed just as a country, I mean, there's more and more need for STEM jobs. So that's becoming a focus in school, that's becoming a focus in college, like that. that's kind of the big upcoming thing that everybody wants to be a part of. There's all kinds of programs for, for putting people into STEM. And I think that that sort of advertisement that's happened that's most recently over the past, like the past five, 10 years has really made a lot of difference too in the generations that are coming up. So when I hear you both talk, like, uh, you're, you're not deadpan, you're excited, you know? Exactly. Like, so, uh, so yeah, it's, yeah, not what I anticipated, you know? <laughs> no offense. But, but like, what, what would you say, like, uh, that you're just, you know, one of the last questions, I'm just curious, what, what would you say you're just most excited about right now? Like, what are you amped, what gets you going? Hmm. So uh, personally, I'm actually, I just got picked up to go work at Education with Industry, mm -hmm. which is a, a program that uh, Air Force Space Command does. They'll send you to go work at like Northrop Grumman or Lockheed Martin or SpaceX and you get to work like actually with the engineers. I'm super psyched about that because I'm going to go work on the satellites that I currently fly. And I'm going to see them, you know, just like in the clean room and actually get to see how, how that process works and then I'm gonna come back and then I'm gonna work on them again from the operator side and bring that knowledge back. So, I mean, just even little programs wow. like that that people get to do are super cool because you can, you can bring in all kinds of new knowledge to your people. It's just a matter of bringing that knowledge back and teaching others. That, that is the key. Investment of sorts, mm -hmm. yeah. That's awesome. What a great opportunity. Yeah, That's I'm awesome. psyched. So, you're going to, so where are you going? What, what, uh, it's out in Dulles, Virginia. So yep. I'll go out to um, Northrop Grumman Innovation Systems, uh, the artist formerly known as Orbital ATK. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, That's, it'll be awesome. That's a great opportunity. Yeah. Uh, I, I say Gen, or Gen Space. Sorry, Gen Space is what really excites me the most and what I'm most excited about, the optimism, the passion for the mission, the, the idea that really – there are no limits. So as, as I'm transitioning, being more senior and moving on, as the next generation S is senior. moving in, mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you have to hand the baton. And having a younger generation that is excited and, and, and smart and thinking just these incredible thoughts and these innovative and innovating, that's what really motivates me the most and what I'm most excited about and feeling that energy is this next generation coming up. They are phenomenal, phenomenal. As you can see, they are phenomenal, absolutely. <laughs> and I mean, just tying back into that, it's having those opportunities like education with industry, like Space Flag, um, like all the different things we get to do. It's not just a job on console anymore. It's I'm gonna come back in a year and there's probably gonna be 10 different opportunities that'll, that'll be out there. And it's 
those opportunities are going to be awesome, and that's what keeps keeps us excited. Well, let me ask you a question. This one is specifically for you. What, sure. what what was the um you know you've been in what two and a half years? Two, yeah, two and a half. Yeah. yeah. Um. So in those two and a half years, um, what what's something like a moment or a story where you're like, all right, um, mm. I made the right decision. Like this is where I need to be. Um, okay. Because I'm sure you've had some like days where you're I've like, had, oh, I don't know about this one. <laughs> I've, I've had a, 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 a slew of different kinds of days, I will tell you. Um, but uh, let's see. I'd say probably the most hmm, the most profound moments that I had. I'd like to say space flag just because that that is what I where I developed the most for sure in in the shortest span of time. But uh, I mean, just my four months on crew last year, like I learned from my crew commander, I learned from the staff sergeant sitting next to me. He he taught me everything I knew about what I was doing because my first day on crew, I was literally like shaking, like, do I turn this on? And they were like, I need an adult. Just do it. (laughs) And just that transition from like June 1st of last year all the way to October 1st of this past year. When I hit October 1st, I was like, these people are my best friends. We're doing the exactly. coolest mission. And and that probably, that moment coming off crew of like, wow, I'm super appreciative for this opportunity. This is so cool. What I get to do every single day. And yeah, it's just that, that was probably the most profound period of time that I've had so far. Yeah, Space Flag was sweet. I learned a ton. But uh, yeah, just being with my crew, being with my people, and doing the mission was awesome. And for like, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, like being on crew, that just means like uh, you're you're doing the job, yes. right? Yes. Yep. And like I remember hearing something like the the average age of someone over at Shriver Air Force Base who's on crew flying these multi million million bil- yeah, yeah million dollar million. satellites. Uh, what the average age was like 24, 25 years old, so mm-hmm. something shocking. And, and I- that even seems high to me, honestly. It may be even younger a yeah. little bit, but you're right. It's right around that age. There, there's nothing better than being part of a team, working towards a common mission, and being in it, the good, the bad, the ugly, being in it every single day, and working together to achieve something significant. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what's so great about working on crew, and something, you know, coming from a different background, I came from an acquisitions background, and I cross-trained into space and satellite operations. And really what drew me to satellite operations was this ability to work on a team and be part of something bigger than, than, than myself and just mm-hmm. having a role in a bigger purpose. And that's what makes satellite operation, I think working on crew, same for me, the best times I've had have been working as a part of a crew, just being Absolutely. one of the teammates on the crew. What would you say to someone who's uh, like, right now they have their uh, the, the their dream sheet of jobs mm-hmm. right in front of them, you know, pilots on there, you know, mm-hmm. uh, all these different career fields on there and spaces on there. Um, what, what would you say to them? I, I would say every job is important. Every job within the Air Absolutely. Force and the military is critical, is important. I would, I would say please go out and talk to somebody in those career fields. Go beyond just reading about them or whatever. Go actually and talk and meet with people and understand what are the different opportunities within each career field. Mm -hmm. But I would definitely say, hey, space is the place. I mean, if you want to look at where we are growing the most, where there's the most potential, there's the most you know, unlimited opportunities, I would say space. You've got to put that near the top of your dream sheet. You're full of bumper sticker slogans today. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, like, I just can... speak truth to power right now. Let's go. It's Jen true. Space. Uh, this I isn't mean, Jen other. This is Jen Space. I'm waiting for you to get amped up and just the table goes flying. <laughs> like, let's do this. Let's go. <laughs> do it live. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, I had this conversation with somebody the other day, and it's just, uh, I mean, the thing about space is you have to be okay with being uncomfortable right now because every day you're coming into work and it's growing pains because we're learning every single day and we're trying to come up with new things every single day. So you're gonna walk into work and be like, why can't I just do a checklist the way that it just tells me to do the checklist? Why do I have to think differently? This is like, it's tiring sometimes, but you're coming into work and that level of uncomfortable that you're going to feel is also probably the coolest thing you could possibly do because it's constant innovation, constantly building. And you're building yourself, you're building your team, and you're helping the Air Force as a whole. So it's pretty sweet, honestly. That's awesome. That's awesome. Absolutely. Well said. Yeah, there we go. Um, so I know I said a last question like three questions ago. So, oops. Um, but the, probably the most important question, um, so th- those who don't know, uh, so Colonel Manor, Coach Manor, his nickname uh, was a coach of the Academy 
Baseball team. I was an assistant coach at the uh, Air Force Academy baseball team. So being a subject matter expert mm-hmm. on baseball, will the Yankees uh, take first place by five games or by ten games this so, year? So, I mean, I'm sure everybody in Boston who maybe, you know, or Boston fans <laughs> might have something to, to say about that. But given the talent and the level of talent with that the Yankees have, they're going to be right there. Now, whether it's Boston or that, it's going to be one of the two. I have a friend of my from high school who happens to be the Orioles' new head coach, so uh. I think maybe they'll make a play for that. So I would I would push the Baltimore Orioles hopefully up near that mix, <laughs> finally in that argument. But can never count the Yankees out. Can never count the Red Sox out. I thought you were going to go but throw a Chicago was Chicago reference. There? I mean Chicago. I don't. You know they 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 have a. They What's have your a, team? Isn't that your team? So right? I'm San, I'm from the West Coast. So San Francisco Giants. Oh, there we go. We were a little greedy. We won three championships in five years. The Rangers uh, tried. Rangers, was Rangers fine. were there. They're still good. <laughs> That's right. They got the Astros. They, so. they, have, they have a team still. Yeah. Astro, Astros, are not, you know, they're pretty good too. Rangers. <laughs> decent. Just had to get the Texas plug uh, in. Yeah, That's fine. So, I mean, we're 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 still lagging. So going back to New York with the Giants and the Yankees and Brooklyn Dodgers. I mean, there are a lot of rivalries that go back to the turn of the that century. Could, yeah. So that'd be so cool growing up to see that. But absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, cool. Well, uh, so I think that's about all I got. Is there anything you all want to throw out there real quick or mm-hmm. sure. No, I, I, I'll defer oh, to man. you. And then. <laughs> okay. I mean, space is really, really, really freaking cool. That's what I will say right now. I want to know how Just you really because- feel. I mean, it's hold on. Okay, <laughs> it's true though because I I get to do something new every day. I've always dreamed of doing this. It's it's just awesome. I get to talk to my pilot friends and feel like I'm contributing to the Air Force just as much as they are nowadays. And it's it's sweet. And uh, I think we just gotta keep coming in with the right attitude though every day because some days are hard, some days are easy, and uh, you just have to wake up and and have that mindset that you're gonna be. You're gonna be positive today, and you're gonna you're gonna love space and be excited about what you do. Awesome. I think the opportunities are there. I think people are hungry for new ideas, and I think the sky's literally again not the limit. I mean, this is the time. It's an exciting time. We're we're open. A lot of change going on. When there's change, there's opportunity. I think what we do is incredibly and uh, critically important. Again, not only to uh, our ability to wage war, but also to wage peace in our American way of life, right? So this is a critical time for our country and for our space community writ large. And it is a great time to be in space. We understand the importance of what we're doing. We take pride in what we're doing. And if you're excited and you want to make a difference, come join us. We need warriors. We're looking for warriors. Come, come join our team. Come be a part of Gen Space. And don't limit yourself. I mean, literally, it's wide open right now. The opportunities are endless. That's awesome. Well, I'm amped up. So, <laughs> Heck yeah. Cool. Well, I want to thank you, uh, both of you, Colonel Manor, Lieutenant Sakovich, for you know joining us on this uh, you know this first take here. And uh, this was a lot of fun. Hopefully, our viewers you know had a good time because awesome. I know we sure did. Uh, so, well, that's all. Uh, that's it, folks. This is our uh, thanks for joining us as we launch our pilot episode of Generation uh, Generation Space. We're looking forward to you uh, joining us next time. Thanks. Please join us for future episodes of Generation Space, where we'll be meeting more airmen from around NAF space. And stay tuned for a series on space launch from A to Z, from designing and building a satellite to launching it to making it operational as a part of a constellation of Air Force satellites that make our way of life possible. Generation Space is a production of Air Force Space Command Public Affairs. The Generation Space theme is by First Lieutenant Tyler Whiting. Our audio engineer is Jacob Mosolf. Our video producer is Dave Grimm. And our executive producer is Robert Buckingham. For more info on Air Force Space Command, visit our website at www.afspc.af.mil. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Thanks for listening and watching, and thanks for supporting the airmen who aim higher. They used to say the sky's the limit, but for us in space, there is no limit.